Okay, all dear students, this is Pradesh Chaudhary Quantum Guru. Uh, let's see this very beautiful question of gravitation. Uh, in this question, what is given that uh, M1 and M2 are two point masses separated by a distance R0. The only force acting between them is their gravitational force. So they are released from rest and we have to find the uh, at what time they will collide. So there is one way that uh, you can write the, at a general moment find their acceleration and from acceleration find velocity and from velocity uh, using uh, V relative is equal to uh, relative velocity is equal to dr by dt and then from that uh, we can find the time. Uh, it will involve uh, complex integration so here we will use some elliptical technique using the concept involved in the gravitational motion. The, it will take some time to understand but uh, once you understand it will just a uh, matter of few seconds to get the answer. So let's go ahead. So first of all uh, there are no external forces acting between them. So uh, center mass was initially at rest so center mass will always be at rest. So when they were released the both M1 and M2 would start moving towards each other and eventually will collide at their center of mass here. So they will collide here. So suppose this is the center of mass and this center of mass is at a distance R1 from M1 and R2 from M2 and we have a direct formula for that. I am writing the uh, direct formula. The R1 is equal to basically the about center of mass the mass moment is 0 so m1 r1 is equal to m2 r2 and r1 plus r2 is equal to r0 solving that thing we will get r1 is equal to m2 upon m1 plus m2 into r0 and r2 is equal to m1 upon m1 plus m2 into r0 and now we have to find this time so I want to uh, think of an alternate problem basically what is happening basically we have to find the time of collision. So whatever time M1 is taking, the same time as M2 is taking. So M1 is colliding at center of mass. M2 is also colliding at the center of mass. So I am thinking of an alternate problem in which uh, I am just considering only the motion of M1. And uh, I am assuming that the some other mass is causing M1 to move with the same acceleration as M2 is causing to M1. So let me put an another mass at the center of mass, a uh, very large stationary mass at the center of mass and that mass is causing that mass say m is causing m1 to move with the same acceleration as m2 is moving. So in that case uh, we have the same boundary condition. So the time collision in this case uh, would be same as time of collision of m1 and m2 in this case. So suppose I have put a fixed mass m and then the m1 will move towards this fixed mass and will collide eventually at that fixed mass this fixed mass is at the common center of mass of the system so the mass m should be such that it is causing the same acceleration as m2 is causing to m1 so that is the logic so because of this m2 uh, i'm just taking the initial moment because of this m2 the acceleration caused to m1 is say a1 and because of this capital M, the acceleration causes say capital A. So, for the this problem, this could be the right replacement if this causes the same amount of acceleration. So, uh, A should be even. And in the gravitation, the acceleration caused by any mass is nothing but its gravitational field. So, acceleration caused by capital M to M1 at this position is the gravitational field of M at this position. So, that would be how much? That would be G capital M by R1 square. And similarly, A1 is the acceleration caused by M2 of M1 at this position. That would be G M2 by uh, overall R0 square. So, just I am writing that thing. So, A is equal to G capital M by R1 square. And A1 is equal to uh, G M2, G M2 by R0 square. Uh, here it should be M2. This should be M2 because this acceleration is caused by M2. M2 here. And this is right. This is right. This is right here because this this is M2 here. So. 
this G and G will get cancelled. So capital M would be uh, R1 square by R0 into M2. And from here I can just put the value of R1 in terms of R0. I will get the capital M. The value of capital M would be M2 upon M1 plus M2 whole square into M2. So that is the value of capital M. That is the required mass. In the planetary motion we know that the a planet moves around sun in elliptical orbit or a satellite moves around a planet in elliptical orbit. The central mass about which the other mass revolves is at one of the foci. So this is the ellipse. Uh, these are the two foci. Uh, the central mass is at this focus. Uh, its coordinates are a e comma zero. This ellipse has an equation x square by a square plus y square by b square is equal to one. A is semi major axis and B is the semi minor axis. So, right now T is at T is equal to 0, the planet is here and uh, it revolves like this. We know that the time period of revolution, the foci coordinates we have written A, 0 and minus A, 0. And the sun or the planet or the main, basically the main central mass about which the planet is revolved, the central mass as a coordinates a comma zero and there is a relation between this a and b the relationship between a and b the semi major axis and semi minor axis b is equal to a into square root of one minus e square the time period of revolution time period of revolution is uh, i am only showing the half of the time period though. this is the half of the time period and this half of the time period is pi square root of a cube by gm. Now what an important thing is that you see that this time period is de depends only on a, it does not depend on b. So that is the thing we want to exploit. If I increase e, obviously e cannot be more than 1. So if I increase e, so if I increase e, so b will decrease like this chi will also change if e is increase earlier this was the position of the the central mass central object so now the because of e has increased so a is also increased so it has reached here and this part is here so as i will keep on increasing e so this b will shrink and this will go here this will go towards it as i will increase e so this foci this foci will go here this foci focus will go here and this will shrink like this like this like this like this and the time period will remain same time period will remain same because i have not changed a and if i make this e is equal to 1 so b will become 0 so what will have we these two will just coincide on the x axis and the focus will reach to the two foci will reach to a comma 0 and minus a comma 0 so the my central planet will come here and we have to find the uh, basically collision this from this so now what will happen in place of the planet going like that uh, suppose this is some orbiting mass like going like this if i decrease e increase e it will go like that it will go like that it will go like that and when e will become 1 b will become 0 it will go in a straight path like that it will go like this and this is the same case as the previous one in which case there was a mass capital m and the other mass m1 was going towards capital m and we had to find the time of collision so here like that so if i compare this thing with this thing so this m1 goes towards m capital m and uh, if i compare these two so 2a is r1 2a is r1 r1 value was m2 upon m1 plus m2 into r0 and the capital m also we had written from here we can solve a a is equal to m2 upon m1 plus m2 r0 by 2 so and m was this m was capital m2 upon m1 plus m2 whole square into m2 and now coming back to this situation so everything is written in the situation here this was um, m1 m2 were released from rest initial separ separation was r0 and they collided to their common central mass 
and I replace this problem to this problem in which at the center mass a suitable mass capital M a suitable fixed mass capital M is placed such that it provides this M1 same acceleration as M2 provides to M1. So time of collision of M1 to reach the center mass is same as the time of collision of M2 to reach to capital M and that is in turn is equal to time of collision in this case. So now finally the time of collision is pi square root of a cube by gm and we have got the a m2 upon m1 plus m2 into r naught by 2 just put the value uh, finally we will get the time of collision to be pi into square root of r naught cube divided by 8g upon m1 plus m2 that is all answer thank you